It's really simple mathematics, right? If you measure the distance a boat travels in a zigzag course versus the diagonal distance to there, and then take that same distance and put a boat to directly to leeward or directly behind, or even if you put this boat, uh, if you let this boat to weather and on your hip it'll end up further out, the leverage gets bigger and bigger, same as if you put it there and there. The next shift you get, your boat's going to turn either left or right, yeah? If you turn right from there, that boat turns right from there, that distance doesn't change a great deal. If you turn right from there to there, by the time that boat, and you, what you've got to do is think of the course that they're going to, you know, because they've obviously got to hitch up to get back to your line, this course gets shorter. Because the marks, remember the marks up there, you're putting, if you're putting yourself between marks. If you take a lift, this course gets longer for the red boat between you and it. So, so the point you're making there, and I think it's a very important one, is because you know you've got right of way as starboard boat, it doesn't always benefit you to take it. To, to take it. In, in, I'll guarantee you, in, uh, in every situation where if I was the starboard attack boat, there's no way I'd known I caught starboard on no, that boat. I'd no. let them throw every time. Yeah. Or even, even after mid, mid, uh, yeah, mid it, you know, even yeah. in here, you just know? duck down behind it and because keep going. Because yeah. it goes back to that thing: what's my strategy? If my strategy is to go left, yeah. the only what this boat's going to do at that point very rarely will they take your transom. Yeah. They're probably going to leave out you because if yeah. you're making smart decisions to go left, they're going to think yeah. Max is onto it. I want to go yeah. left as well. Yeah. But if it works out that you want to go right. You want to end up over here. Yeah. You would call that boat cool. because you're looking yeah. for a lee bow, yeah. and you're out of there. It gives you a reason to get out. You got to, but also, you know, watching back through these mm. lanes to see what lanes are open. Mm. It's all about executing your strategy. But we've seen a lot in the office. You know, the little kids are going to win a starboard call, and so they go and they call starboard. Um, whereas we've moved past that, hopefully, and we're trying to think about our strategy, not just winning this tactical situation. And it's also, you get one in the bank too, because the next time you come to that cross, you, you, you generally find that, that people remember. Mm. If, they, if they have right of way, when you call the 360 on him, you give him, but you have to, you were the start of boat. That's been cool. Him. But look, as a so you fair sailing, I'd be going, go through, go through as loud as I could, and getting your crew to lure it, go through, go through, because you're really, you're going to lose more by, tacking in your water. by them tacking in your water or, yeah. you know, because to get them to do if they do a 360 after the event, no. you, you no. have to change course at the last minute to dip them. You go that one. <laughs> okay, so we've got a situation here. We've got a port starboard. Yeah. Other way around. Yeah. Got a port starboard. Starboard yes. has had to significantly alter course to avoid contact because yeah. port stuffed it up. From here, let's work out, let's just talk through how the rules and what you can do. You yell, oh, what'd you do that for, you idiot? Don't you know the rules? Read the rule book. <laughs> Sail along past here. And then you have a discussion. Do you think we should protest? Oh, I'm sick of this. He's doing it all the time. Okay, yeah. Um, where's the red flag? Oh, oh it's in the bag fine. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get a bag out. It'd be on hailing distance. Get the flag, red flag out, put it up. Protest. Oh, why haven't they done a 360? Completely invalid protest. What you need to do, if you want to enforce the rules, get to here. The rule's been broken because you've avoided that. You need to do two things. At the first reasonable opportunity for each, you need to hail protest. If you're yelling and screaming at them and swearing at them, mm. you're saying other words rather, other than protest, and so a jury might find that that's invalid if you've had this great big dialogue conversation. So first thing is protest. First reasonable opportunity, put your protest flag up. If it's in your bag, you will not be able to have a protest, uh, put the flag up at the first reasonable opportunity. It needs to be in a sheep bag here or Probably. with a pig mm. on the side stone and you just fly it. Mm -hmm. I guess if you don't call if you don't call them through and they you have to hold the course then you have got the you, you protest is your next thing. But if you hail them through, you really yeah, don't have much of a way to stand on. And if you actually do the numbers, 
if you do a, if you take a dip of half a boat length mm. off a transom of a boat, you do your sails correctly. As you come down, you'll you foot faster. You accelerate, mm. and if you do the right curve, you actually lose nothing out of it. So you really only get involved in that because it's just going to cause aggro. Um, if these were two were basically the same handicap. Um, you know, and you're going, it's the last race of the series and you're tied on points. <laughs> or, right. if this person has just done it, this is the fifth time today they've done their poor attack on me, <laughs> I've got a responsibility to the fleet to start enforcing the rules. And so the other thing, so what I do, um, and I have to be careful how I use the rules because it's seen that I've got an advantage, but I'll, I'll go um, protest and could you just do a turn please? So protest, put the flag up, could you just do a turn please and say it nicely. Just coming back to one other comment, so it's not 360 anymore or 720, that changed in the last rule book. The terminology is a one turn penalty or a two turn penalty. But to make it really easy for Cooter boats, we've got a part turn penalty. So if this boat has said, oh we stuffed that up, I'm never letting George call um, the starboard tax again. You say, yep, yeah, sorry, and all you need to do is do a jive. Mm -hmm. So that's not killing your race. So we've got lower penalties. We want people to just say, look, my bad, I had a misjudgment. I'll do my penalty and I'll get on with it. Why do, why so, do we do that, Ben? Why, why don't we stick with a full 360? What, what, we're, we're trying to have lighter, less um, uh, kill your race. Less, less kill the race. So, you know, if, if you had to do a two term penalty, oh, yeah, well, you might as well start the engine. Yeah. Like, look, I might be telling everyone how to suck eggs, but if you watch the horizon behind a boat that's crossing, if the, if the horizon's disappearing, they're crossing. If the horizon's appearing, you're crossing. If the horizon's holding, you're going to hit. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> really good. So, a port and starboard boat from a long range out. So you're saying you can see in front of it. That's what so you're saying. Looking, isn't it? You're sitting here. You're viewing through here, right? Yeah. To the land on, on the head. Yeah. If the land's disappearing behind the fore stay of a port tack boat, you, they're going to cross you. If the land's holding, you're going to hit. If the land's appearing, you're going across them. Because you imagine if that was a stationary thing, the further you go across, you see more land. Yes. Vice versa, if, if you're stationary and they keep moving, the land will disappear. A couple of things. Um, so we talked about overlap and the bow sprit is part of the overlap. But the bow sprit is not part of the hull links for the zone. So that's a bit it's tricky. confusing. So at three hull links, if that's the marks here, so we've got three hull links. <coughs> Motorboat with its bow strip is in the zone there. Is mm -hmm. overlapping. Um, so the common one is that we talked about with Argentina. Um, and at a top mark, rule 18 does not apply between boats on opposite tacks. So the rules there are that. <coughs> It's important stuff you take the mark away, that's how the rules operate. So rule 18 on upwind does not apply. If you want to know what the rules are, take the mark away. Um, the basics of mark room. So we're on the lay. First boat reaches the zone and it's clear ahead. It's got mark room. If the boats are overlapped like that at the zone, when the, the boat nearer the zone reaches the zone, then the inside boat has mark room. If it was like that, the inside boat, inside overlapped boat, gets mark room. The rules that we were talking about there are so many of them, it's not funny with that um, Argentina scenario. So at this stage, this boat here is port tack and needs to keep clear. Gets a bit closer and starts to go through head to wind. So rule 13, it's a, it's a tacking boat, so it needs to keep clear. 
then it gets down to there and it acquires right of way because it's clear ahead. But it must initially give this boat room to keep clear. And if this boat needed to luff to avoid before the tack was completed, uh, and before this boat initially gave it room to be clear, just to, just to go up a little bit higher, but needs to change course to avoid contact, then this boat has broken the rule. And then there's a rule called 18.3 called tacking in the zone, which is if you tack onto port tack in the zone, and this boat needs to go above close hauled mm -hmm. to avoid, even if, let's say it completes the tack there, this boat's way out here, slow tack, to actually avoid this boat needs to go above close hauled, so luffing the jib, then this boat has broken the rule. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself in a port tack situation like that, there's really only one way to do it, and Argentina should have done this. So above it. Let them all through. If you need to go in there. So that's assuming that there's you know a line of four boats coming along here, you can't find a hole. <coughs> Sail well past it. Insurance, you know, you may think you've lost you know, an extra boat length or two by coming up here. But there was a line of five, you were never entitled to tack there, so there was a line of five boats. So of the six boat lengths that you would have lost from here, mm. you've only given away one by sailing yeah, on right. through and mm. out of everyone's way. And I think as a fleet, is everyone happy with that as a standard mm. way? Mm. Mm. Ben, can you do the same thing again and put a few more boats to windward of the uh, of the, uh, yeah, the rear, rear most boat? Yeah. Up here. Yeah. 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 So if you can, if you do manage to step through, <coughs> mm. you can still turn. You can come up here. Yeah. Well, clear. Let mm. let them go through. You might end up, <coughs> you know, sort of level with this one or something. Mm -hmm. But you haven't upset anyone. No one's mm -hmm. going to be um, looking to get back at you later on in the race. Mm. Conversely, going back to, if, if you're not going to make it, you know the cross is on for here, and you're down here. It, going in early, knowing going in early, because you've looked at the horizon, disappearing horizon, slowing your boat up at this point, so that by the time these boats all get to there, they're around the mark, and you end up at this point, it's much better than ending up down at that yeah, point. Yeah. Mm. And if you leave it to the last moment to make a decision, <laughs> then you do this massive bear away, and it's like, mate on, jib on, mate on, come on, go on. And you've completely stopped the boat here. Whereas if you, you know, spring sheets early, make a decision, you know, six boat lengths away, spring sheets early, that's just how it worked out. The moral of the story here, of course, is, you know, have a really good reason for wanting to be on board. <laughs> <take away. laughs> The other thing that we try and do sometimes with our hitch marks, and this is to just try and help out a bit. Traditionally, hitch marks come out like this. So we've got the first mark and then the second one there. Sometimes, we'll set our hitches like that. If you think about that scenario there, these boats are on the ley line. Port tack, when they come across here, the spacing out here is, the further out from the mark, the spacing is generally more. Port comes around here, there's a bit of a gap in here, which is a safety gap that they can go in. And it means that all of those boats are kind of free to just do that. If So that's why Sometimes we'll be setting the hitch like that, especially yeah. on a short, um, short first beat. It just gives us this safety thing. Yeah. He's taking the zone and he's got to keep clear and he's port tack. <coughs> so he's a port tack. He's a tacking boat, rule 13. Then so comes is it, it, wouldn't it be smarter for boat two to come closer to the mark to, to avoid, uh, sorry, uh, starboard boat, avoid the port tack coming in on his, on his stern like that. Close up that the, the red one? No, no, no. The blue one? Yeah. The blue one, the, smart, the best thing for, for um, blue to do, 
south straight to the bar. I'd even think about it, if this guy's going to attack close, you'd even shoot it a little bit, just stay clear, roll over the top of the green boat. Because we're talking about strategy, we're not racing the green boat, we're racing the clock. 